Jeff, was it money that killed the Pac-12 or was it the Pac-12 that killed the Pac-12? <laughs> There's no question it was the Pac-12 that killed the Pac-12. They they could have survived. There's ample evidence that uh, they, first and foremost, they could have gotten better leadership than Larry Scott or got rid of him earlier. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's this hubris, it's this pride. You know, all the other bigger conferences with bigger fan bases, they're partnering with networks to make their conference networks the big 10 with with fox uh sec with uh espn and uh you know it's it's just um it, it's just crazy to to see that uh you know they just they just <laughs> i'm sorry i've got that's I've an been, awesome cameo <laughs> you know they said well we're not going to partner with anyone i think espn wanted to part with partner with them to make the pac-12 network and they said no we're going to do it on our own we're going to keep our own money we we know how to do this and that, you know, just debacle after debacle with the Pac-12 network. That's the start. Um, should have gotten Larry, rid of Larry Scott. They shouldn't have had their conference, you know, headquarters in soup, ultra expensive, the most spe- expensive downtown in the nation in San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, let, let's just lay out thing after thing. And, and just the presidents were asleep at the wheel. I've heard about, you know, if you're going to fail, fail fast. Uh, Pac-12 failed slow and just wouldn't, I just wouldn't, uh, you know, cut it off and, and get a new leader, uh, wouldn't partner with someone. And then, and that's the long-term story, the short term, they had ESPN, you know, ready to go with them. Uh, yeah. and they said, well, we think we're worth $50 million. And the ESPN offer was apparently right around 30 million a year. And, um, uh, yeah, they just overvalued themselves. They just, they think they are now what they were, you know, 20 years ago. And, yeah. They're, they're just not. The other conferences have caught up and surpassed them, mostly because people in that part of the country just don't care about college sports as much as they do in the SEC and Big Ten country and obviously the Big 12 country. So that's I, I just think they killed themselves. Uh, they couldn't couldn't see what their real value was. You know, what's the first thing? You know, know thyself. An important part of life is know thyself. And they just did not know who they who they are right now they know who they were 20 years ago but not who they are right now so you have four teams left i I love that you mentioned you know this is a a pro sport market a lot of these places over out west it is more pro sport oriented and those are some passionate fan bases but nobody was showing up to these college games attendance was terrible jeff now these four teams left do they do they exist in a conference what's going i mean these teams don't know where they're going to play in 2024 what what happens now yeah, I mean, everyone's waiting for Stanford to do something. Uh, again, I think, you know, people are just baffled. Just these yeah. old school academic types are just bewildered that nobody wants Stanford. It's like, have you seen a Stanford football game in the last five years? Um, the stands are empty. You know, they they actually over the last five years, they are number 15. I think it was 15 or 17th in the nation for total revenue. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, how are they doing that? You Which know, is not bad. <laughs> I know that's really good, but it's their donors, and they have uh, twenty years ago their academic endowment. So just people who have given money to sit there and to earn money and to fund scholarships and to earn interest. It was two hundred and seventy million dollars twenty years ago. It's uh, reported to be close to a billion dollars right now. Just their <sighs> academic endowment. So they're just, you know, they're just making interest. They have a good year in the market and they're, they don't need to sell a single ticket and they're going to make money. So yeah. it's uh so that money is not the problem with Stanford, but it's just, uh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad, uh, dad, it's a great here, huh? you know. <laughs> I, uh, Jeff, well, before we get you out of here, then yep. the, um, the, the death of the PAC 12 and uh, obviously the life of the big 12, are you disappointed at all? Uh-huh. I'm sorry. As I again. Death this, of the Pac-12, the, the life of the Big 12. Are you disappointed at all? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm maybe a, a little less kind as as most. Um, there's a lot of tradition, a lot of great schools. That, but you know, as a BYU fan who just you know get, being the butt of jokes of Pac-12 teams, you know, we, they've. They wanted to schedule us. They wanted our fans, you know, sell our fans to buy their tickets to fill, help fill up their stadiums. They just wouldn't let us in the club. We weren't the right fit. There's a lot of reasons behind that. We won't go into those, but it's it's you know 
partially political, but, um, you know, cultural fit is the, the thing we say nowadays, right. but, um, you know, I just view it as a life lesson that, you know, you, you, that they, they would have, if they would have added teams like BYU, like, you know, Baylor, TCU, uh, Oklahoma state, when Texas and Oklahoma left, they could have added a handful of schools and, and they would, they'd be a, an existing yeah. conference now, but, uh, they just thought they were too good and, and didn't need any help. And they were just better than uh, the unwashed masses from the, the religious people and the, the, you know, the rubes from the, the Midwest, the, the Hicks and yep. just didn't want to be associated with those people. So maybe I should be more kind and more Christian on that, but uh, Hey, you know, that's, that's just what happens when it's yourself, you know, I yep, mean, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, Jeff. <laughs> and Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Uh, man, thank you so much for joining this show. I would love to have you on a consistent basis because the work that you do, how, how knowledgeable I can be about realignment and just college athletics on the whole because of the, the research and work you do is spectacular. Please tell people where to find you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, JJ Fuller 72 at Twitter is what I do most of the stuff. Uh, I, I've written a series of articles that's listed at ESPN 60. Dot com uh espn 60 sports.com excuse excuse me if you just look up uh, jeff fuller and uh you know pac 12 media deals it's a series of seven articles that was pretty much comparing the big 12 and the and the pac 12 and why the big 12 got a media deal and why the pac 12 was struggling and it's pretty detailed it's sort of overkill in several areas but there's a lot of data there and i just like to throw out data uh just metrics uh, look at fan uh, fan base sizes yeah. look at revenue all, all kinds of stuff so find me there and appreciate the opportunity to come on this great show love locked on big 12 absolutely that's jeff fuller jeff thanks again and for everybody out there thank you for making locked on big 12 your first listen every single day come back tomorrow and on friday and every day after that I, we got a lot of great guests lined up as football season starts this weekend here on locks on thanks for making it your first listen every single day big 12 and we're out.